All right, so we got the portholes to where I like them. I think they look good. Um, I did. <laughs> I actually ended up putting one more color on. I mixed uh, the livery green with um, some white and just kind of hit the bottoms. I just felt like it just needed a little bit more. I don't know how they were coming through on the on the screen, but I'll make do. So next up, um, since I did all that nice airbrush work, I want to cover it all up. Um, this product is actually made by Vallejo. I don't know where this bottle came from, but um, yeah, it's Vallejo Liquid Mask. Um, you try not to use your best brush for this. Um, the idea is that, and my uh, my nozzle's a little clogged. Oop. So I'm gonna have a toothpick here. And I'm gonna put a little hole in it and get it down in there. Um, so we just did all that airbrush work, and obviously we don't want to ruin it. And secondly, um, we don't want to have to be too careful. I have a lot of airbrushing to do on this. Um, you know, this whole area is going to be airbrushed blue, cream, blue, cream, um, and I just, I want to protect that. Uh, so this is a really nice way, you said a little blue there, I'm not sure if that's the color I'm going yet, that's why I just put it up there. But, um, yeah, I try not to use, man, it won't come out of the bottle. I did just put a toothpick in it, didn't I? Let's try that again. Put a toothpick down in there. I swear, I just I just tested this bottle the other day. There we go. Okay. So, oh, oh, wow. Do you see all that? Oh, that's too much liquid mask. <laughs> oh, well. I'm, I'm due for a new bottle anyway. So I try not to use my best brush for this, but um, you do need to be able to brush it on at least somewhat uh, carefully. So we're just going to go like this. And you see how it's just building up? It just makes a nice little... Um, some kind of a layer. I don't know what this is made out of, uh, but we just do that. And what we're going to do is, I I also coated this um, this paint with a layer of Tester's Dole Coat uh, just to protect it in case uh, the layer mask pulls any of the paint off. At least it's protected underneath a, a clear coat. Um, I'm putting seems a little thinner than I want it to be. Um, I'm going to put one coat on and then let that dry. I'm going to put another coat on just to be careful. Um, I want to be able to not worry about the paint that's under this. So I want to make sure I have a nice, a good solid coat on here. Um, and the idea is like, I'm not, I'm not going to paint um, the whole ship and then just all of a sudden peel this off and everything's going to be perfect. Uh, but I do want to be able to airbrush the way where and when I want to and then I can peel this off and then do brush work and touch it up um, as I see fit uh, but the the bulk of it the the majority of that transition I just want to keep um, nice and clean and usually when this dries it it dries with a little film over it so you can kind of tell where it is um, so I'm just putting a big daub on there getting it down into the corners um, if the corner, if you don't get it perfect, that's all right, um, because we can go back and, you know, these little, these creases are going to take a wash really nice, so if we need to wash it, we can um, to fix it. And like I said, like, I don't mind, I'm trying to be careful with it, but I don't mind if it gets, like, on there, you know, because I'm going to be painting out with a brush anyway, and probably after these are already peeled off, so um, let's get that porthole. And that's what we just do. We go around, we do every porthole, um, get a nice little layer mask on it. I'll, like I said, I'll probably do two coats once it dries, um, just to ensure that I have the coating that I want on it and uh, I don't ruin the paint job underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for all of this. I can tell on my brush it's already starting to, to harden, um, so I'm going to rinse that. And uh, I'm going to finish these all up and we'll be right back. Alright, so our liquid mask is dry. and. Uh, I'm back with the Iwata because I really don't like the way my other airbrush is working. So, um, you can see this blue here. I think this is going to be the blue that I'm going with. I got a couple different colors for that. Uh, I just threw it on to give it a test. But I want this center section here to be um, off white and then the bottom off white and then that's going to be blue. 
Um, these in here off white and in the rudder. So I'm just going to start with a base color of let's see what it is here. Uh, desert yellow. That's just to take the take the darkness away from it and, uh, and get ready for the other color. So I'm just going to hit this and do this whole line here and get, uh, get the color starting to uh, transform to the lighter color. We're going to do that on the whole ship, and uh, probably do it mainly off camera, so I just get an idea of how you can cover a black really quickly and nicely if you hit it in a brush. That is just really cool. And that liquid mask is pretty much dry, um, so if I hit it, it's not going to be a big deal. And hopefully in my camera while I'm doing this. Um, and what I'm going to do in these, uh, in these panels here, this color I'm going to try to keep in those lines, and I'm going to try to hit the center more with the lighter color when it's time. Um, I'll show you that when, uh, when I get I don't mind I'm getting paint on that because I'm going to need to paint that anyway. Because um, I'm going to need to do some kind of a masking here to get to get a nice line. Um, but yeah, we're going to uh, do all that. I'll do that off camera and come back and whoa, ship down and show you how it looks. So it's a pretty nice uh, airbrushing tool, silly putty. So you can make a, you can form a nice little mask there with your silly silly putty. You come in here with your color, and then brush it. It's pretty much shit. <laughs> um, but you can come in, and I, I set that line down a little bit on purpose because I think that was a little high with the white right there. I'm just gonna spray it in. Get a good on here. And just blue metallic. I'm not 100% sold on this, on using this blue metallic. Um, I'm not sure how it's gonna go. And you see this? I'm getting, I'm getting foaming in the back of the trigger of my airbrush. It makes no sense. I told you this evolution is so finicky. It's now spinning, so it's better. Just not having any luck with the airbrush today. Some, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Uh, I'm losing the airbrush now too. I'm not sure what color that's all going to be, but I know this top's going to be blue, so I'm just going to spray that. And, uh, so yeah, it looks a little... It look as crisp as that, so it just looks a little spattered. Um, so I'm going to have to fix that up. Maybe I'll switch airbrushes just to make this go faster. good and then once that's uh, once you get it to the consistency that you like it you can pull the uh, pull the silly putty off and you should have a nice little mask let's see how it looks so I can come back and fix this later uh, well it's not too bad I can touch that up with the brush but um, yeah just uh, came I guess just a little low there but uh, a brush will We'll tighten that up a little bit. So yeah, silly putty, man. It's a really nice tool. Really nice tool. Okay, so I ran into a little snag. Um, I think I'm going to switch this up. I like the colors. I like the blue. But um, the blue goes on better with the airbrush, it seems. I started painting it down here, and it's kind of chunky. I don't know if you can see that. And I don't like that. So what I think I'm going to do is... I'm going to airbrush all the blue, that way I can do the highlights and do the top here. And then I'm going to let that dry really good and seal it. And then I'll airbrush back, because I already messed up this right here. You can see all the spots. I already messed that up. So um, I do like the color scheme. I think it. I think it's pretty cool. The blue metallic is actually pretty nice, um, but it's going to be better. So yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to... Uh, Load the airbrush up with uh, blue metallic blue and smooth all this out. This needs to be a nice smooth color here. Um, so that's next. Okay, don't uh, I didn't <laughs> you didn't accidentally go back to the first video. Um, so I decided to uh, airbrush the blue 
first and then I was going to mask that and put the the ivory in between um, when I did the blue I realized uh, I, I have this this Arctic blue from Vallejo and I really like it I think it's a really cool color and I've been wanting to use it and I thought maybe this would be the project for it um, so then I had this Wicked Colors airbrush and it's a really bright blue and I was going to use this to highlight and as I was airbrushing I went through and I started the highlights I really hated the color um, and I didn't know I just wasn't feeling the metallic I just didn't it just seemed too much reminded me too much of like building like a, a model car right like a, like a model car kit and then just painting like a, a beautiful blue on a 57 whatever Chevy and I just I didn't feel like it was right for this application so um, the great part about an airbrush is your your primer coat is pretty thin so you can just primer over and it looks just as good as if you uh, did it for the first time and that's another benefit over a rattle can in my opinion um, so yeah we're kinda we're kinda back um, so this time I decided I, I'm gonna do some pre uh, pre-highlighting and pre-shading you can see like I, the white I kinda didn't hit these panels because I want them to be a little darker that's gonna be the ivory again and um, we're gonna try a different blue um, we're gonna base it off of stormy blue um, game color and then go a little lighter um, I, I really never didn't work with net not never but I really don't work with blue all that often so um, I, I know blues a little tricky to highlight you gotta watch how far you go because um, I don't want to go into royal blue I want to keep it with a darker blue um, so it's uh, this is <laughs> this is why I'm video man this is this is great to show you how um, how you can make mistakes and how you can uh, you can you can recoup from them um, these propellers I did keep these I thought they came out pretty nice I kinda like there's a little bit of a gradient I don't know if that's picking up uh, but then I gotta edge all that with like a darker color um, which is gonna go good so since I had the white I did um, you know two two tone shading on these guys black on the bottom one on top so I can see a little bit more of the detail uh, when I get to painting them plus I had some of that blue on there and uh, I didn't like it so um, okay so we uh, got a really nice coat of the blue down. Um, this is Stormy Blue by Vallejo. Uh, so what I did was I actually had a little time yesterday and I got to Hobby Lobby and I got new parts for the Hiwata airbrush actually. And the nice little thing about Hobby Lobby is if you have their app you get 50% off or 40% off. So I got a new nozzle for I think it was 19 bucks and 40% off of that and the needle I have my wife with me so she got 40% off of the needle um, and it worked great so I was right it was just uh, it was a matter of my my parts wearing down and you know for 20 bucks uh, I made an $80 airbrush pretty much brand new um, so I realized when I made the mistake before with the blue and the and the, the cream that I needed to reverse this. Um, I also, these lines are so sharp that uh, I don't think it would take me a while with Silly Putty to be able to mask that correctly and, and get a nice crisp bed. I want this as crisp as I possibly can, but I want to be able to airbrush these panels because I want a little bit of a gradient here. Um, so uh, after the blue was done last last evening, I put a clear coat on all the blue um, because I'm going to try. I bought this a while ago. Uh, it's to me a masking tape, and it's it's made for uh, hobbying and, and whatnot. Um, but I've had nightmare situations before with putting tape on on this paint where it just it peeled right up, and um, I had a real nice airbrush surface underneath, and and uh, uh, the tape ripped it right up. Not this tape; it was actually just you know classic old painter's tape. Um, so. I wanted to give myself an extra protection. I didn't highlight this yet. I th looking at um, how these surfaces are, I haven't painted a lot of vehicles because I don't play like 40k or anything, any game that really had a lot of vehicles um, besides like a steam tank. So I realized that highlighting these is is a little difficult because it's such a flat sur surface. Um, so what I'm going to do is, and I think that was kind of the problem I had with the metallic. Uh, I, I highlighted and it just didn't look right. 
So I think I'm going to edge highlight these, but I'm going to do the taping first in case I need to touch up any of these edges if some paint bleeds underneath, because all these rivets are really close. So there's definitely a chance for pockets of, of paint to get under there. I'm going to do my best um, for that not to happen, but if it does happen, I can touch it up uh, with the blue, with the brush carefully in, in the spots that I need to. Um, and then I'll go back and I'll do the edge highlighting, like even on, on G-Dub's um, paint scheme, like there's really no, not much highlighting or transition of color, it's just edge stuff. Um, so yeah, so that's what we're going to try to do. Um, I, uh, I'm going to try to tape this all up and then what? I'll probably do like, I'll just get the edges nice and then I can throw some silly putty in between um, where I don't have to be as precise. Uh, just to show you, I did pull off some of the um, the liquid mask just on these to see how it looks. Uh, remember that this, this whole outside is actually green, but the liquid mask, um, that's why I'm peeling it off now because when I paint this, like I don't want to have liquid mask underneath. Uh, underneath the edge here so that's why you'll see some of that green coming through um, but yeah the, the liquid mask worked pretty well it looks pretty nice um, I won't be able to do them on these yet because there's a lot of painting to do before but this guy I figured um, the blues pretty much done um, that's just gonna be washed it, it there's no reason to really highlight I'll edge highlight some of that but uh, I just want to see how I make sure after all the coats of paint that went on it that uh, the liquid mask worked and it worked great so that's where we are. I'm going to uh, turn off the camera, do all this taping, and we'll be back. All right, so let's do the big reveal and uh, take all the mask off. I actually had an idea. Um, I think I'm going to do this cream color on some of the balls, like in here. Um, but I don't have any silly putty left, so I'm just going to do that separate. Let's see how this turns out. Um, really like these colors together and I hope everything came out nice and sharp. The good thing is I can fix it if I need to. Get the silly putty off. The uh, silly putty I'm not worried about. It's the tape that got me nervous. Let's see how that goes. Let's get all this off first. Looks like a pretty clean line. That I can I can deal with. That looks good. Doesn't look like any of the blue came up. Yeah. That's nice. Nice clean line. Alright. More silly putty. Let's see how we look down here. Real nice, real nice. Happy with that. It's worth the time. Definitely worth the time to mask it all up. And it really didn't take that long. Oh, I'm excited. Let's give it out. Tweezers. Oh, this one's stuck on it pretty good. No damage to the blue. Look pretty sweet. And I'll be able to go and highlight the blue, do any weathering that I want to do. I think that looks solid. Um, a little bit of touch up there, but the good thing is it's on the blue, and the blue wasn't highlighted at all, so I can just uh, make that make that straight. That on the top there looks pretty good. The other side. So yeah, this to me the tape worked pretty nice. Like, it's like a little air got underneath there in that spot, but that should be easily fixed. And uh, the lines look pretty, pretty crisp. A um, little bit of problem there. Shut up. Got tape everywhere. Yeah, 
pass that. I'm pretty stoked with that. That's uh, that's, that's pretty solid. So pretty much, I guess the airbrush is done on the ship, uh, which is cool. I think, I think that's a cool color scheme. Um, it's time to uh, do some edge highlighting on the blue. I'll fix up a couple of these spots and uh, go from there. And then I think if that's, let's see. So this goes there, so that's gonna be blue. I think if that's, some of this is cream would be pretty cool. Some silver in. I think I'll do that. Yeah, so that's the way it's looking right now. And uh, next up we're going to, um, I gotta paint the fins the cream color and in there. Um, and then we're gonna work on the blue and the metallics, so forth. So a lot more to do, but um, I'm thinking the way it looks.